Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Welcome back to our 2020 SHOT Show coverage. I just want to take this time to remind everyone to go to HankStrange.com and sign up for our email list. Very important nowadays. Let's just jump into it. That's your thing. How about that? Yeah, I mean, is there any, yeah, just... yeah. Talk about shot show, sort of what we're yeah, what I'm up to or whatever. Yeah, yeah uh, I think a little bit more. So let me let me just do the intro real quick. Okay. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Hank Strange. We're at the 2020 Shot Show in Las Vegas. We're on the convention floor. We found a quiet spot because we've got Chris Chen, Top Shot fame. A lot. I mean, you know, it's it's more than Top Shot, right? But that's what all the gun guys remember you for, I guess. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. So I figured I, I would like. We were on a panel. Yesterday was it? No, day before yesterday, we were on a panel, and I and I woke up this morning. I was telling Lola, "Man, why didn't I get like Chris's info and everything?" Because I would really like to talk to him about some of the stuff we were talking about on that panel, but we really didn't get a chance to expand on things. So, I mean, if you want to talk about Shot Show, I definitely, you know, I would love to know how Shot Show's going, what cool guns, well, let's, but let's, all the yeah, questions. Let's, yeah. yeah, let's let's definitely, I think, dive more into the panel content because yeah. it was. Uh, it was a great panel, but we only just you know barely scratched barely scratched the surface. Yeah. So uh, quickly, it was just like a diversity panel, which I think scares off a lot of people sometimes in the mm. gun world because they're like, you know, listen, it's just the Second Amendment. We're all the same. Let's focus on that. Um, I'm sure you get that sometimes. Oh sure. Yeah, yeah and I think a lot of. Um, you know, the, my, my assessment of where the industry is at right now in mm -hmm. terms of outreach is a lot of these industry executives and managers simply don't understand how to speak to mm. people of color mm -hmm. or, you know, I'm, and I'm, I'm gay and in the LGBT mm -hmm. community, mm -hmm. right? And the message to the African American community, to the Asian community, to the gay community, some of that needs to be relevant, mm -hmm. right, and uh, insightful to those mm -hmm. communities. So, or maybe have a little bit more context because it's a little bit more complicated. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. sort of at, at a very high level, the themes mm -hmm. of personal protection and mm -hmm. self-defense and our, our, our natural given, uh, you know, natural born right to protect ourselves. Absolutely. Those are, those are universal themes that it is. cut through all the demographics. Yeah. But uh, there are experiences and mm -hmm. dynamics that are unique to all of these different uh, communities. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if I'm speaking to an LGBT person, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're going to have a very different conversation mm -hmm. around, you know, gay bashing mm -hmm. and, you know, violence of just simply mm -hmm. walking down the street, holding mm -hmm. hands, right, yeah. with someone that you love, right? That's, mm -hmm. that, that's, that's an experience most straight people don't mm -hmm. experience, right? You right. walk down the street holding your, you know, your mm -hmm. straight, you know, partner's hand and, uh, right, mm -hmm. like, no one thinks it's anything. Yeah. yeah. But me, right, if I'm holding my husband's hand, right. walking down mm -hmm. the street in certain, you know, communities or, you know, parts of our country, right, that, mm -hmm. that, that could be very dangerous. Absolutely. So let's, let's like, dive right into that. Because um, I know, I remember I did something uh, several years ago with YouTube in Georgia, and they just invited a bunch of YouTube guys and me. <laughs> and so I was the gun guy. And uh, there were some guys that have YouTube channels, and, and they're gay, and they were asking me about guns. And they were like, you know, we need, we need to defend ourselves, too. Mm -hmm. You know, so they were very interested in, like, you know, what I had to talk about. But I think sometimes it's the same kind of thing that I think exists in the black community. People think if you're this, then you have to think this way That's right. yeah. and believe in mm -hmm. that. So. I mean, from you know, I know my point of view. What's what's your point of view? Uh, that that exact same dynamic exists mm -hmm. in the gay community, where mm -hmm. you know, typically, uh, or it's expected mm -hmm. for a gay person to be a liberal Democrat, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then therefore agrees with all the other yeah. parties' platform uh, mm -hmm. and positions, such as being anti-gun. Mm -hmm. Now, you and I know that there's plenty of pro-gun Democrats, but I would mm -hmm. say in the LGBT community, mm -hmm. yeah, there's uh, mostly liberal Democrat, uh, mm -hmm. you know, gay folks, but I, I'm, I'm conservative, libertarian leaning, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there's actually a very significant number of us mm -hmm. in the LGBT community, and the irony is we're, we're like closeted you know, kind of closeted uh, conservatives gun, gun. and yeah, yeah. closeted, you know, <laughs> gun owners. Yeah, right. Um, and so, right, it's, and so that's a, that's a different conversation, right? Being mm -hmm. a closeted gun owner mm -hmm. and trying to 
give people the confidence that, hey, mm -hmm. right, it's, it's okay mm -hmm. to be a gun owner. Mm -hmm. um, but I think taking a step back, you know, a lot of uh, LGBT folks, they don't necessarily think about a firearm as a, as a means to protect themselves. Okay. When they think of a firearm, they often think of the violence that they see associated with a mm -hmm. firearm on, on TV, yeah. uh, movies. Right. Uh, they just uh, Or where they think someone might use that against them and then they don't have an advantage right. because it kind of, you know, I guess leverages, they, they believe it might leverage it against them kind of a situation. Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's this... Um, like so many things in life, we, we often need to see people that look like us mm -hmm. like modeling, right? Like yeah. We're all modeling certain behaviors, mm -hmm. and uh, right when we're, we're open and we're public about mm -hmm. being a gun owner, right? Mm -hmm. Being gay. And really, it, it, for me, this is about normalizing mm -hmm. all of this, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's just, it's, I don't know, like I think it's just things that we believe in our head. You know, that because life, I think, is perspective. So we believe it in our head, and it's not that the other person doesn't think it. A lot of it starts with we're thinking that they think it. Mm -hmm. You know, like one of the things I think a lot of my friends that are gay are actually pretty badass people. Mm -hmm. They're a lot more badass than me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're definitely more badass than me, right? So, but, but everyone has a completely different idea, you know? So these ideas I think we have in our head about what we think people believe about us stops us at first. And that's why we don't put it out there, when really in the end, I think we're pretty much the same once we boil it down. Yeah, and uh, where the industry has been going over the past few years has mm -hmm. been really encouraging. And mm -hmm. at a minimum, it all starts with opening up the conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. and getting the industry comfortable, mm -hmm. right, having the LGBT community, mm -hmm. having the African American community, mm -hmm. Asian community, right, involved, and then asking the question, right, how can we all, how can we all help grow mm -hmm. the sport, uh, grow the Second Amendment community, mm -hmm. and, and, and I mean, we are spreading American values, mm -hmm. right? So that is also like a very common universal right. uh, thread, and, and I think we need to. I think that is really some core messaging to mm -hmm. the industry that look like we're all fighting the same fight and mm -hmm. we get it like you might be an old white guy but mm -hmm. hey like we can still talk to women we can mm -hmm. still talk to gay people and right other mm -hmm. other ethnicities yeah um, because people like on that panel people say to like people say to me and I think it happened on that panel someone was saying oh well you know black people they do this <laughs> how come they're you know how come they're Democrats why aren't they Republicans why don't they stand up for guns yeah, it's not that that's true, it's that we're really not looking at that and thinking about it the right way, because the reality of it is everyone believes they need to defend themselves, but you know, there's, there's the things that make them uncomfortable or the things that they think, like, hey, if I go into this room and a bunch of gun guys, what are they going to think about me? How are they gonna? It's, you know what it is? The easiest way to say it is the first time Lola and I went to a gun store. You know, and you're wondering, are these guys idiots behind behind the counter yeah. because of what I look like, or is it just because they're idiots? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and it takes you t it takes time to figure that out, right? Mm -hmm. And so, if we don't talk to people and help work through all of that, when they interface with that person, they kind of give up on it. And and this is why, it, if the industry wants to exist, they've got to figure out how to do that. Yeah. From and, the people ma manufacturing stuff all the way down to the store. Yeah, and then, right, it, it goes exactly, you know, to, to marketing and advertising. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we I've been seeing more people of color mm -hmm. in, you know, firearms ads and mm -hmm. you know, all the magazines. Mm -hmm. and so that's been very encouraging. Mm -hmm. And um, on the Asian demographic side of things, it's, yeah. it's pretty fascinating because Asian is mm -hmm. way more complicated when you start looking at country of origin mm -hmm. and language. Yeah. <laughs> so sorry, the Chinese are very, very yeah. different than the Japanese, the Koreans. Yeah, culture. The culture mm -hmm. and uh, personal firearms ownership mm -hmm. varies depending on mm -hmm. which Asian country we're talking yes. about. Yes, right. So, you know, a lot of... Like our parents probably grew up, like I know my parents grew up where they have a stigma about even touching a gun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know with yours. Yeah, what's, it, what's your particular background there? So my ethnic background is half Chinese and half Japanese. Oh, okay. And on the Chinese side, you know, personal firearms ownership in China is, it's, mm -hmm. it's not allowed. And yeah. so a lot of Chinese often view guns as things that the government right. and that law enforcement, the police and the mm -hmm. military have, right? And mm -hmm. it's a way for... Uh, uh, government, right, is mm -hmm. are the are the only people who yeah. should have guns. Yeah, Where, too much power for us. 
or yeah, and and, and also just not something that ever mm -hmm. crosses their mind, mm -hmm. right? And so when they come to America, most people aren't coming to America because they want to buy a gun. No. <laughs> right? They come to America for opportunity, right? A good mm -hmm. job, right? Uh, just right to improve their lot. Mm -hmm. And so the Asian American experience uh, is, is often very unique because, mm -hmm. right, so who's going to be that first gun owner, right, in, mm -hmm. in that immigrant experience. Right. For me, it was my father. Oh, it who was? Who okay. was born in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. He was in the U.S. Navy. He was okay. a, actually a navigator in Vietnam, mm -hmm. flying planes, so he didn't shoot, right, as, as mm -hmm. any part of his uh, mm -hmm. military service, but uh, through basic training, right, and, and officer you know, candidate mm -hmm. school, yeah, he mm -hmm. had to shoot just for, you know, for, for training. Right. Um, but, uh, right, and then now, you know, So how did you, how did you get into that from, you know, from Okay, so he started it when he came out. Did he get more into guns, or he was just familiar with them, and then you kind of grew up with it around, but not? Yeah, we would only go to the range maybe uh, once every three or four years, okay. uh, and he taught me how to shoot at the age of six. And mm -hmm. It was just a fun recreational activity. There mm -hmm. was no Second Amendment mm -hmm. conversation or overlay. It was mm -hmm. literally... I just want to have some fun with my dad. Right. I want to do something that's fun and mm -hmm. safe and memorable. Mm -hmm. um, and he bought guns initially uh, to protect me and my mom mm -hmm. when I was born. You know, that was mm -hmm. like the main uh, moment for him to say, okay, mm -hmm. I have a son and mm -hmm. I, I need to protect. protect. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, everyone's, uh, you know, obviously experience is, is different mm -hmm. and, trying to uh, but again right this universal concept okay right you you are a parent mm -hmm. right or maybe I think that's where I really decided yeah I'm going to do this and do this the right way mm -hmm. I mean I grew up in New York so I had access to yeah. stuff even though people believe that you can make laws and ban things people can't get it I don't I think you just make it more taboo and, and then people want they yeah. want it more yeah maybe more expensive but people can get it so yeah. I, I kind of decided, yeah, I'm going to do this all legally and everything when I had my kids and, you know. Great. So, yeah. Good stuff. Well, hey, I uh, wish yeah. we could chat more. I know, man. Yeah. I know. We I'll, have to, I, I hope this like starts it. Maybe we'll get you to come on the podcast absolutely. or something yeah, like that. Yeah, let me know. You got my yeah. info. And, yeah. uh, I would love to know like how it is in the industry because I'm sure, like you were saying, it, it's extra complicated for you dealing with all these different dynamics and. I'd love to know how the industry is treating you. And we all only have so much time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, limited time. Yeah. We all have like you know many yeah. aspirations, yeah. and yeah, it's, it's been it's been fun though. Yeah, it's cool, man. Yeah. I, I'm I'm glad you you took the time that you did. Yeah, thanks for having me. And hopefully we'll be able to uh, link up sometime and really get into this. And you know, I know everyone's not going to enjoy it, but hopefully most more and more people do. You know, this will live out there. How can folks really quick if they want to? Uh, talk to you or communicate with you, follow you on social media. Yeah, sure thing. Uh, I'm active on Instagram and uh, Facebook at Top Shot Chris. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my website, topshotchris.com. Uh, anybody who's looking for a book on instructional pistol rifle shotgun shooting, mm -hmm. I've got my book, Shoot to Win, wherever books are sold. Awesome. Thank you, yeah. Chris. Thanks again, Hank. I appreciate it. All right, guys, that's the 2020 Shot Show. Chris Chen, there he goes. See ya. Peace. Awesome. Thank you. Okay.